jaw, but um, as you say, there is a lot of room for play. Xanted Swarm is one way, Guttural Response is another. He has access to both of those cards. His opponent, Nam Tran, is playing Painted Stone. This is the blue-red version. We saw the Imperial Recruiter version, the mono-red version. This one uses the blue for all of the usual suspects, Brainstorm and Force of Will, but it also has the awesomeness of a Transmute Artifact to be a pseudo-tinker. Yeah, I happen to know actually that Dustin Klopping dispatched an Imperial Painter player just last round uh, to advance to Undefeated. We have exactly three Undefeated players left, unless you want to count uh, Kevin Gerhardt, who is technically Undefeated, although he has picked up a draw. Technically uh, Undefeated. Sounds, technically like, undefeated. sounds like not Undefeated to me. I, he hasn't <laughs> lost. I'm, I'm just holding true to the terms. And Sensei's Divining Top is the opening play here off of an island for Namtran. Yeah, Nam no doubt fetching an island because he doesn't know what his opponent's actually playing. Otherwise, he'd have you know, certainly been a little more interested in Volcanic Island, probably. Uh, Dustin has the Taiga naturally. Is he going to go for a turn one? It's an intimidating thing to do against Island since his Divining Top, but it, you know he doesn't know that his opponent is actually one of the more vulnerable decks to Char Belcher as far as decks that play Islands and Tops. <laughs> He's starting to go for it. Predator Ritual casts a land grant for uh, nothing. the storm. Yeah, he's just storming. He already has his taiga here. And I imagine he's going to be emptying for, what do we have? Uh, one, two, three, four. Four copies of Empty the Wounds will give him eight goblins. He does have three Empty the Warrens in his main. Yep. I was talking earlier with... Uh, a, another Charbelcher player that was in the booth with us, Cedric Phillips, he'll be back next round about how some people have played this deck with zero cards in their sideboard, mostly because this is a deck that really, really doesn't want to get gummed up at all. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Spirit Guide. Nama uh, going ahead and confirming everything. At this point, there's not really uh, you know much... As far as bluffing to go on here, uh, Nam can, you know, kind of rep a force, but Dustin's already all in. He showed his hand. He's like, yeah, this is all I can do. You know, I'm just going to try and make a bunch of goblins, hope they kill you. Brainstorm, Grim Monolith, Intuition, Transmute Artifact. Yep. Uh, Nam does not actually have access to any kills. He's popping his top in response. And then Empty the Warrens is coming down. Lots of little goblins. Storm a mechanic that uh, when it debuted back in Time Spiral Land, a lot of people just felt like it's either going to be broken or it's going to be not good. <laughs> well, I guess we rapidly figured out which one it was. <laughs> yep, eight goblins as, uh, as predicted. And now Nam will be trying to uh, put together a combo kill before the eight goblins kill him in uh, three turns. Pretty short clock. Yep. He can recast his top here, but I think that's going to be a little slow. I, I think he has to brainstorm. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a format of greed, if you ask me. Main phase brainstorm, a good way to get things started. He does have uh, three ancient tombs and one city of traders as a means to accelerate. So if he drew that, that would be an excellent draw to get the Grim Monolith out this turn as well. I think I see a city of traders. So I could be wrong. I know I saw a grindstone, so he's getting there. Oh, I uh, think I was wrong on that land. Yeah. Looks like goblin welder, grindstone, and another transmute artifact are his draws with the brainstorm. That's that's gonna actually pr almost wrap him up here, uh, as he has to put two cards back for his brainstorm. He knows what he's gonna be drawing over the next two turns, and he's just gonna get attacked by all these goblins. That's what we call brainstorm lock. Yep. He'll have uh, a, ch a chance, maybe, to naturally top his way through uh, for a, a draw off the top, but he would not be able to activate most of the cards he could try and kill anyone with. And uh, Dustin untaps. Another eight about to come on in. Here they come. I don't even know if Dustin's looking at his draw steps at this yes. point. He appears to just be taking the cards off the top and putting them face down in front of him. I'll consult these when they might become uh, relevant. And that's all she wrote for this one. Yep, no lands on top and Nam is done. Yeah, one of the things that uh, when people look at older deck lists from uh, the ancient days, they sometimes say, how come no one played Brainstorm? It was legal. 
Well, uh, one of the reasons people didn't play Brainstorm is there were very few shuffle effects, yep. and most of them were pretty terrible. And you see what happens with a Brainstorm when you get no shuffle effects, it's pretty wretched. Yeah, it saw a little bit of play when it came back around in like Mercadian Masks era standard, but not really a ton. Uh, and then, you know, it was mostly just a fixer and setup card in a lot of matchups. Uh, not, not the high-powered card we have come to know in, in the Legacy yeah. format. The, uh, the big way to shuffle was thawing glaciers, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. And uh, now, if you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan, and I'm here in the booth with Glenn Jones, and Cedric Phillips is taking a well-deserved rest this round. Deserved, at least. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Earned, merited. <laughs> this is round seven of nine of the StarCityGames.com Open Series here in Cleveland. Make sure you join us on Twitter, at SCG Live. That gets to every single one of us here, and we do pay attention to that Twitter. Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. Hashtag SCGCLE. And uh, right up on the left, Dustin Klopping trying to be a 7-0 player. His opponent, Nam Tran, down a game, also trying to be 7-0. These two combo decks both have the ability to kill in one fell swoop. Dustin Klopping, if he was playing against the Imperial Painter version of this deck, would be even a stronger favorite than I think he might already be. But Force of Will is a part of the cards that Nam Tran can be bringing into this. Mm -hmm. What do you think Dustin Klopping is going to do in uh, the face of a possible Force of Will? Uh, I think we have, do have to keep in mind specifically the cards that Dustin actually saw from Nam Tran in that game, which were Island, Brainstorm, and Sensei's Divining Top. Uh, he didn't see anything else, so he's probably assuming his opponent is on uh, a Miracle deck. That's the most likely thing. Uh, there are decks like you know Painted Stone out there, but he's going to be sideboarding, probably assuming his opponent is on Miracles. And that means he's going to want to bring in his four Zantid Swarms. Uh, and he may go ahead and he's probably going to grab the guttural responses as well. I doubt he'll bring in the forest. That's mostly just for Wasteland and uh, tempo -y matchups. And then everything else in his sideboard is actually part of his wishboard. Pyroclasm, Shattering Spree, Diminishing Returns, Reverent Silence, Infernal Tutor, Empty the Warrens, and Tendrils of Agony. Nice. Uh, on, the only card I could see you would ever consider bringing in maybe is the Reverend Silence, if you're not planning to ever Burning Wish for it, it's the kind of a situation where you might bring it into your main deck, but that's not how a deck like Charbelcher works. It only right. wants the solutions for Burning Wish. It doesn't want to draw any of its uh, random bricks when it's just trying to ritual off successfully. So I anticipate him bringing in just all those Antid Swarms and Guttural responses. Nam Tran, on the other hand, I, I see a bunch of cards in his sideboard um, that are going to be relevant, six of them in my mind, but let's go to the other ones first. Ensnaring Bridge, Worm Coil Engine, Red Elemental Blast, Tormod's Crypt, Blood Moon, those are all cards in the sideboard, Oof. but the cards I like, three Fluster Storms, that can stop Dustin Clopping from being able to build up the requisite mana, or if it's fighting against a Empty the Warrens, just stop all of the Empty the Warrens. Yep, it's definitely one of the best cards uh, against this strategy. The and Xantid Swarm is the big, the big seller there. Yeah, and the other one, Spell Skite. A Spell Skite on the table means that a Charbelcher can't actually kill you. Oh, well... It can't kill you on the first shot. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, sometimes it does it, take time to reload. Sometimes yeah. it can't take the second shot. Yeah, it's not a, uh, it's not a desert eagle or anything. It's more of a musket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a crossbow, a musket, yeah. something. We're not, we're not looking for precision. We're just blowing holes through people real slowly. <laughs> and uh, on the Twitterverse. A MTG Kobe does pipe in that Brainstorm when it came in with Markadian Masks was a card that we saw used in Rebels, and it's true Counter Rebels did use Brainstorm. Um, you can remember that Team Your Move Games back in around, uh, I want to say 2000 and 2001, definitely used that as a part of their Counter Rebels package. But again, you know, the pickings were pretty slim up until the point where we got some really good fetch lands. Nam Tran now on the play, where he wants to be against a deck that could kill him on yeah. turn one. His opening hand not good enough, though. Uh, I did see City of Traders Scalding Tarn, so he already had more mana available in this game than, than the other one entirely. Uh, but it doesn't look like the rest of his hand held up. I think he had a, a Reb and maybe a Force, but without any of his combo pieces or ways to get one, it, it, Disruption's actually not that relevant. Post-board, Charbelcher has the ability to play through Disruption. We've already talked about the Xantid Swarms and Guttural Responses. So if he's not actually creating any pressure, the fact that he can stop Dustin from comboing him halfway or once uh, in full is actually not that relevant because Dustin will just eventually draw like seven more cards and do it again. Now let's pretend that uh, Dustin Klopping had sat next to Nam Tran and knew that he was playing Painted Stone. Does, there, does that even change anything? Most of the rest of his board is a wish board, so... I actually, if I knew my opponent was on Painted Stone, I probably would not bring in the, the guttural responses, I think. Uh, 
because you, you really just you don't need that much for a deck that only has force of will uh, and flusterstorm to threaten you and flusterstorm is not affected by guttural response in the least so i would just bring in the swarms if i knew what my opponent was playing 100 percent uh so th that's kind of going to be the debate i think yeah one of the things you can do with a wish sideboard is if there are cards you like but you don't want to wish for because they're too slow you could board those in but i don't see any cards that fit the bill yeah. in this case that's what i was discussing with the reverend science if he assumed his opponent was on counterbalance but i don't think he wants to glut his deck it, like a deck like char Belcher, that strategy is going to be rarely employed a deck like high tide now that does that frequently it obviously has a huge wish board and it's pretty common for a high tide player to board in a few of those wish board targets just because they figure, I'm never going to wish for this in this matchup, but if I draw it, it might actually be in time to be useful. Namtran doing a pile. I won't call it a shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I can't remember um, who wrote about it fairly recently. I, I want to say it was Travis Wu, but the concept that the pile shuffle is a shuffle is a thing that probably needs to leave the magic... Uh, the, the magic idea lands. You know, mostly piling is great for this. Count your deck, make sure you're presenting the right number of cards. That's great. But it is not, according to the floor rules, an actual shuffle. You need to get some riffles in there in order for your deck to really be considered shuffled. Yeah, uh, generally I, I like to pile shuffle, but when I do, I do it between rounds. And the purpose is to just, before I put my deck in my deck box, make sure I have 60, make sure none of my sleeves are marked. Uh, and then once I do that, uh, I'm kind of just back to actually figuring things out. Occasionally, you know, you need to stretch your arms. I might pile shuffle and uh, mix mix up the, the patterns, start doing some smiley faces within my sevens and all that, you know? Just to cheer but, yourself up? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> raise to, the spirits? Raise morale. You know, tournament, tournaments can be trying times. And let's see if this new hand for Namtran mm -hmm. does the ticket. It's got an interesting I see a story. welder. Yeah, he's got welder, grindstone, cluster storm, great furnace. There we go. Maybe Dustin Klopping has a little bit of a surprise there when he sees that welder. Or maybe he knew all yeah. along. Nam's Mulligan, uh, not really prepared to come down against Dustin. What with it being, you know, down to four. Uh, if Dustin starts off strong, we see the guttural response, so I think we probably can safely assume that Dustin either overvalues guttural response or did, in fact, assume his opponent is playing a, a deck like Miracles. And he appears to just be going for it. You know, let's rock it. Let's see what happens. I would, too. How's that? How does that look? How's that red oh, flame look? He oh, he apparently boy. miscounted. So that's a mulligan to <laughs> six for Dustin. Oh, Nam Tran, he has a big smile about that. I'm sure. Yeah. We see the grindstone wow. come on down. He drew a oh, painter's servant wow. as well. Uh, this is actually pretty interesting. He all draws of those, a lion's eye diamond. He's in business here. All of those mulligans. He mulliganed down to four cards there. Yeah. And he is looking like he could be in it. Xanted Swarm. <laughs> Poor Xanted Swarm does have a goblin welder on the other side of the table. Oh man, I was I was I was sweating the top of that deck. A lion's eye diamond would just allow Nam to get in it right now, but instead. He's uh, just going to jam for one with Goblin Water and play a second Grindstone. <laughs> Look at that smile from Nam. He's like, yeah, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Dustin, uh, oh, he has a Jataxi Probe. He'll, he'll likely play it, and he'll get to see that Nam is actually quite close to executing him. Uh, the Painter Servant is already in his hand, and a Fluster Storm, if Dustin doesn't try something this turn, uh, might actually be able to shut him down as well. You said something a little bit ago about how a, a magic tournament can be a very trying experience over the course of the day. <laughs> it's a very, very long event. One of the things I love about a deck like Charbelcher, the game will lo most likely be over quickly. And yeah. so will the next one, and so will the next one. In between rounds, you get to hang out, do whatever you'd like, and get rested for the next round. That is one of the benefits of playing quick decks. Nam draws a third copy of Grindstone. Definitely not what he wanted to see. In fact, I would go so far as to say that uh, any of the other like 56 cards in his deck would probably have been more interesting to him. Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Glenn Jones, and we're watching a uh, combo match between an anemic Painted Stone. It did triple mulligan, and the opponent here has all of these sideboard cards, Xanted Swarm, Xanted Swarm, Guttural Response, but all of those cards mean he's less apt to go off himself. Yeah, it actually appears that Dustin kept a hand that was going to use Rite of Flame exclusively to jump from one to two mana, which is a, you know, a key jump in the Charbelcher deck. You can play significantly more rituals on two mana than you can on one. Uh, and once he burned that Rite of Flame with some bad math, he could no longer make the leap. Uh, 
If he doesn't find a spirit guide or something similar, he, he might just get stuck and die to a land off the top for Namtran. Oh, he found one though. Tinderwall. Tinderwall, another way to jump oh, from boy. one to two. And now we are really close to the end. Is it over? Well, we're up to three mana. Nothing can be countered. We're up to five mana. Nothing can be countered. Seven. And if we have a Char Belcher, we might get him. If we have Empty the Warrens, though, N Nam still got out. Oh, this and is actually... Plenty. This is, this is not over yet. I see an empty in his hand. Yeah, so do I. Uh, I don't know if he has a Belcher, though. And to be fair, if uh, Dustin doesn't hit the you know, correct number of cards before running into his Taiga, Nam could also actually get another shot at, at winning this game. He's got seven mana, four spells. Belcher? Ooh, Belcher, all work? right. Let's sweat it. Okay, now we're flipping the top. We've got One, out. Come on, two, Taiga. three, four, five, six, Seven, That's eight, nine, boom, you are dead. Yep, and he's going to go ahead and prove that he does, in fact, have a taiga in his deck. <laughs> there it there is. There it is. Namtran defeated handily by Dustin Clopping. Mm -hmm. Charbelcher advances to a 7 and 0 record. Wow. Now, that, was a, that was a pretty good sweat considering the Moldafor. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, he was very close to being able to win there. Um, Dustin Clopping, with this 7 and 0, and given how small this nine round tournament is, he can very, very safely double draw in. Yeah, he's uh, almost certainly going to be double drawing in. There's only a possibility for one other uh, undefeated player. As we mentioned, there's an 18 pointer and a 16 pointer playing this very round over on the Karn table. We'll be seeing if we're transferring over to that table now. Uh, but whoever wins that match will very likely be drawing with Dustin uh, with the ex possible exception of Kevin Gerhardt. If 